Hello and welcome uh, to this very special uh, show. Uh, we are talking about this one man uh, named Jay Shah, the rising star in world cricket. Not as a cricketer, but as an administrator. Jay Shah, he has made a significant impact in the world of cricket administration since taking office as the secretary of uh, the Board of Control for Cricket in India in 2019. His leadership and vision have propelled him to the forefront of international cricket, earning him the recognition and respect globally. Now, Mr. Jay Shah has made another big transition, taking on bigger responsibilities after he was elected the next ICC chairman. Jay Shah, he got the vote of 15 out of 16 members in the ICC board to be elected the next ICC chairman. Jay Shah, he will be taking over as the ICC chief from December 1st, 2024. And at the age of 35, Jay Shah, he will become the youngest to take over as the chairman of the global governing body. But the big question that we are asking at this point is that the new boss of world cricket, Mr. Jay Shah, can he swing it for the ICC? Well, to talk about it and to discuss it uh, further, we are joined uh, currently by Rohan Desai, Honorary Secretary of the Goa Cricket Association. Uh, uh, Rohan Desai, uh, welcome to NDTV. First of all, uh, you know, what we are asking at this point is uh, that we have seen Mr. Jay Shah do some incredible work, uh, you know, as uh, the General Secretary of uh, the BCCI. How do you think uh, Jay Shah will bring that expertise uh, to the ICC? And in fact, what are the challenges that lie ahead for him in order to expand the footprint of uh, cricket uh, on a global stage? Oh, very good afternoon. Uh, it's, uh, I'm glad to be here at the NDTV speaking about uh, our Honorary Secretary BCCI, Mr. Jay Shah. Uh, I'm very much happy on his appointment, uh, on his uh, uh, winning as a, uh, you know, ICT chairman. I mean, indeed, it's a great pleasure for the entire country. He's the youngest man who will be holding this position. Uh, if you see, uh, Jay Shah, Mr. Jay Shah has been, you know, uh, working tremendously well for the BCCI and for the Indian cricket over the years. I mean, uh, we have seen many reforms, many policies were changed and, you know, the infrastructure-wise, things were changed drastically during his tenure. And I'm hoping in the even as an ICC chairman, he will do the best for the country and for the entire cricketing world. Um, uh, he has the capability. That's what I feel. It's my personal, you know, experience along with him as a secretary of Goa Cricket Association. Uh, I had an opportunity to work with him very closely. And uh, if you see this man, uh, this man is full of a vision and full of a confidence. I mean... Uh, the way he works, the way uh, he uh, portrays himself, you know, his behavior with the cricketing fraternity has been, you know, commandable. Uh, though he will face challenges, I mean, uh, uh, in, you know, we are uh, hoping to see uh, cricket in the upcoming Olympics and, you know, getting entire cricketing world to, you know, uh, achieve that goal and to participate in the first ever Olympics in uh, next year, 2020, uh, 2028 for that matter. So, um, we are just hoping for that and, you know, uh, looking for a better cricketing uh, prospect under his tenure. Um, I also want to talk about uh, the Goa Cricket Association and as a smaller association yourself, sir, what has been your experience of working with him personally? So, it's been two years I'm um, working as a secretary of Goa Cricket Association. I've attended around uh, two annual general meetings with him. I mean, if you see the entire, you know, entire uh, association, uh, entire BCCI, uh, you know, uh, the community as a, as, a, as a cricketing community, I mean, I feel I was, you know, I was the only person. I'm, I mean, I want to share one more thing. We share the same uh, birth year. Even I'm born in 88 and we are of the same age. And, you know, Amongst all the people, all the seniors, all the senior people who are, you know, in the BCCI and, you know, uh, taking us, taking the youth along with him, you know, uh, discussing the policies, discussing the cricket and, you know, not feeling, not making you feel that you are, you know, you are, you know, you know, you are a junior, you are, you know, you are yet to, you know, establish yourself and, you know, considering all the points, whatever, you know, recommendations we do. So, overall, the experience was really good because he was always helpful because, uh, Goa Cricket Association, Goa being a very small state, we had a lot of queries, we had a lot of, you know, uh, demands uh, with the BCCI. And he happily, you know, uh, you know, always said, you know, Rohan, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. And, you know, he was helpful and, you know, giving grants, you know, discussing the infrastructure, how you can develop those infrastructures. So, overall, I had a very good uh, 
experience uh, working with him because the first thing he never said no to anything he was always approachable uh, he was uh, you know uh, he was like um, uh, approachable as well as uh, his uh, way of working was quite uh, quite impressive that's what i feel uh, Mr. Ron, this I stay with us because we are also joined by Mr. Sham Sharma, the director of uh, the DDCA, as well as uh, Rakesh Rao, senior sports journalist and uh, former cricketer Ritender uh, Sodi. Uh, gentlemen, welcome uh, to NDTV. Uh, let me go across to uh, Sham Sharma first. Uh, uh, the big question that everyone is asking after his elevation: Do you think, Mr. Sham Sharma, uh, Mr. Jaisha is capable of uh, taking that experience that he has earned at, uh, as the General Secretary of uh, the BCCI and excelling at it uh, at the biggest stage now? All right, let me put that question across uh, to Rakesh Rao. Uh, do you feel, uh, Rakesh Rao, uh, his experience as uh, the General Secretary of uh, the BCCI, uh, is it going to help him and uh, help him excelling him at uh, this biggest stage, uh, this added responsibility that he has on his shoulders now? Yeah, absolutely. See, because he has, he has been there almost at the helm. I mean, of course, you call him the Secretary, all right. But then he's the one who calls the shots. Uh, so, you know, for him to get the feel of, you know, being the captain of the ship, that's nothing new for him. And, uh, of course, he has been in a position of authority for so long now, since 2019. And he has given you results. You know, most of the people, uh, uh, you know, they have, you know, I mean, right from the beginning, right from 20, 2019, when he took over, a lot of people looked at his surname and they were saying that, look, he's there because of his surname and not because of his abilities. Obviously, initially, uh, he didn't look like a deserving candidate up there. But then look at the results that he actually gave you. He exceeded expectations. He he really, you know, I mean, dealt with a lot of issues brilliantly, I thought. And uh, to have two IPLs in those, you know, restricted conditions, uh, you know, like uh, that was, that was, I think, that was, I mean, he could actually do it. I mean, he, he used to talk about it. But uh, to actually do back-to-back -back IPLs in those conditions were really, really tough. And taking over, I mean, one of his uh, major thing was that when India was to host the 2021 World Cup, the way he got it, uh, you know, to UAE and still Indians retained the rights, uh, the, you know, all those rights which were meant uh, for the host. And uh, he did that. And then again, 2019 World Cup. I mean, sorry, the, you know, the World Cup you know, like, uh, in 2023. So give him a lot of credit where it's due. Uh, and uh, he and he's one person who hasn't faced opposition in the sense that nobody dares say a word when he says or when he speaks. So I think that has given him a position of comfort. And the same thing we saw even in the ICC. 15 out of 16 members supported him. And it's almost unanimous. And, uh, uh, you know, it was, it was almost that everybody wanted him. Now, previously also Indians have had people in the ICC uh, be it, you know, like Jagmohan and the Talmia in 97, till Shashank Manohar in 2020, uh, 2017, I guess. In between, you've, all, you've had, uh, you know, uh, Sharad Pawar as well as uh, Srinivasan. Nobody enjoyed the kind of solidarity that this man has enjoyed. So give the devil his due, but at the same time, uh, give him credit uh, for what he has done. Absolutely. And let's also get uh, the views of uh, the cricketer here, Mr. Ritender Singh Sodi. Uh, Ritender, Jaisha becoming the new ICC chief, what does it mean to Indian cricket in general? Because uh, while India has succeed, succeeded off the field cricket-wise, um, it has fallen short in the longer formats in terms of winning trophies, not just in ge generally in terms of uh, getting the results, but in getting those trophies. Does this also, in a way, mount pressure on uh, Mr. Jaisha? Uh, look, uh, one thing uh, we have to accept, uh, Osama here, is that Jai Bhai has been phenomenal and he has given results. Uh, we won the World Cup. We talk about the policies in Indian cricket. The domestic cricket uh, has uh, come up leaps and bounds. Uh, so lots of things are happening if you talk about domestic cricket. Uh, and if you talk about international cricket, uh, if you talk about the coaching staff, if you talk about uh, uh, lots of things which are required for a cricketer to excel, that has been provided by Jai Bhai. And that is what good administration is all about. Uh, and talking about uh, the World Cup, look, Jai Bhai, uh, we have to give it to him because commitment is his forte. 
uh, when we talk about uh, he eats cricket, drinks cricket, sleeps cricket, and uh, that is what uh, you need uh, uh, from somebody at the helm. And that has been now uh, given in abundance. So yes, he being ICC chairman, this will be uh, great for uh, the world cricket and uh, above all the Indian cricket. In fact, uh, we are also uh, joined by Mr. Shyam Sharma, the director of DDCS. Sir, you have been in administration, cricket administration. And uh, uh, as the general secretary of uh, the BCCI, Mr. Jasha, he has taken a lot of key decisions uh, in uh, benefit of uh, the cricket in India. Uh, do you think we'll see him take those decisions cricket-wise at the global level now, and especially because India is going through a transition phase uh, in terms of cricket? So it's not just uh, having, a young, having the youngest president of uh, the ICC, but also, in a way, showing immediate impact there. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been associated with the cricket. Uh, I'm in DDCA. And we have the youngest president here, Mr. Rohan Jaitley, and uh, I've seen the tenure of the youngest secretary of PCCI. Few decisions he has taken are, like, excellent. As far as the women cricket promotion is there, the match fee of the women cricketer and the WPL, all decisions like he's providing the best of the facilities to the players, staff, cricket associations, and to everyone. So his tenure will be remembered as uh, one of the finest tenure of his secretary in BCCI. And I'm very happy. I, I, I'm very hopeful also that when he'll go to ICC, the scenario will be changed there. The cricket will be more popular, like it's coming back to the Olympic and now it will be more popular in more countries. He has a vision and he completes that vision with the dedication and hard work. And he makes others also to work very hard. Look at our cricket stadium in Arun Jaitley Stadium in Delhi. It was in a pathetic condition. He said, I want it a world-class cricket stadium. He told Mr. Rohan Jaitley to spend whatever money is there required, but he needs the best facilities to be the best. And we have done it. So we need such an administrative at the highest level also who can think about cricket and who can do working hard for the promotion of cricket. Absolutely and you in fact uh, spoke about women's cricket and I want to ask uh, uh, Ron Desai this question. Uh, sir, his work especially around women's cricket it has been uh, much appreciated uh, especially with what he, he has done with uh, the women's Premier League. What do you think uh, he can do internationally to make uh, women's cricket uh, more commercially more viable? Yeah, absolutely. I mean uh, the Women's Premier League was one of the flagship, uh, you know, program uh, initiated by JY. So it was it was a hit, and you know, with the, all the uh, financial and whatever you had discussed about the roles of uh, uh, promotion of cricket and financial uh, and commercial growth of uh, of the entire uh, BCCI structure, uh, it it was a it was again you know very appreciating for him uh, to organize this tournament, and you know even the other association has followed his footsteps even. Goa Cricket Association went on to organize Women's Premier League in the state of Goa. So, you know, the women empowerment and uh, the pay equity, what he spoke about, the policies which I had mentioned, uh, equal pay for both women and even the men. So, this was a welcoming step in the Indian cricket and it is much appreciating uh, because, uh, you know, that was the need of the heart. That's what we feel. That's what we feel. Uh, and I feel in the as an ICC chairman, see, uh, he has a uh, experience of being a uh, ACC uh, Asian Cricket Council chairman since 2021. So obviously, you know the grassroots level, you know the chronology which he has worked in. Like he was a joint secretary before, then he became the secretary, became the Asian Cricket Council chairman, and now now he is the ICC chairman. So all the experience what he gained over the years, I mean, will definitely help him. You know, you know, in working as a ICC chairman and. And the entire cricketing world will be, you know, I think uh, will be benefit will be will get benefited uh, out of it, uh, because as my colleague said, he has a, you know, very result oriented approach uh, in doing things, and you know the hard work what he has, uh, what he does, so that will definitely help him in achieving major, uh, you know, uh, major uh, goals which he is looking at as the ICC chairman, and that will be a good thing for the uh, world cricket. You know, another another thing that uh, the ICC at this moment is struggling uh, uh, with is uh, the tiff between the broadcasters, the negotiations that are that are happening at the moment. Rakesh Rao, I want to understand from you the broadcasters and the ICC. They have been in negotiation and disputes with respect to discounts uh, yeah. uh, and broadcasts, etc. Firstly, how do you think uh, this will affect the health of the sport? And how do you feel uh, Mr. Shah will uh, navigate through all of this? 
see when it comes to you know like broadcasting rights and all uh jasha is an old hand here because he knows exactly how to deal with them and uh, just look at the rise in revenue in fact if you just look at uh, you know i mean let's say a five year deal where the broadcasting rights and everything the revenue is up about 600 million out of which india's share is 231 million and if you see countries like pakistan it is only 37 so just compare 231 with 37 that gives you an idea india's contribution and with this man doing all the negotiations you know uh, i mean he's right up there and uh, that is why i'm saying he will find a way it is not that when he's around there won't be issues there will be issues yes but he is not the man who is only looking at problem he is the man who looked at solution and he proved uh, you know what i remember having a chat with uh, uh, mr shah mr arun jetli and the past uh, you can know, right here at the you know, bbc and uh, when i asked him i said uh, what is it that the people don't know about you what you are doing uh, and uh, you know the media doesn't know it is one thing that i did was there were a lot of you know cases court cases uh, in which bcc i was involved the first thing i did was to get them on the negotiation table and, and i at least shamed the bcc i at that point in time it was 28 crores in no time so if you look at what he's capable of doing he's the man who's going to get both sides on the table and if he has a role to play he definitely do it and now that he is heading the icc and of course this is all about the broadcasting right and that's I think probably the reason why he's got such unstinted support from every member of the icc be it the associated members be it the full members the absolute opposition because this, because they understand that if bcc can gain so much and when the same man is heading the icc of course the icc stands to gain so there's no point in opposing a man for just for the heck of it and that is i think as you know i mean over a period of time last five years in particular the way the world uh, world of cricket has seen him they somehow reluctantly they all started but today they respect him today he has gained the respect by showing results and that is where you have to give him a view and most of the people tend to discount the fact that uh, you know he he owns a certain surname i want people to look beyond that it's all there he can help it but the point is when he is in the icc the surname won't help only the work and the commitment to the goal will make him what people expect him to be absolutely and in fact i also want to get the cricketers perspective here ritender sodi how do you think the cricketers will benefit now we have uh, we have seen how the prize money it has been raised perks and compensations uh, give, being given uh, pensions being given uh, to former india cricketers as a cricketer yourself how do you feel the players can now benefit from his elevation yeah they are already being uh, benefited to the core uh, with the rise of jay bhai and uh, jay bhai really takes care of cricketers uh, if you talk about i just want to uh, put a personal example that every cricketer first class cricketer who has played uh, a certain amount of cricket that is 10 first class matches above that uh, he is given 10 lakh rupees one time for his medical expenses and uh, my dad uh, recently had a knee operation uh, and were 5 lakhs were spent there at the hospital and i uh, sent the bills to bcci and in two days i got the bills i got the reimbursement and that is what cricketers look for because they have given their heart uh, and life to cricket uh, and when you get these incentives as cricketers back i think that's a blessing and that is where jay bhai has been phenomenal the incentives given to cricketers are huge and i just uh, wish and pray that they keep expanding and the way indian cricket is performing at the moment fingers crossed i think we are world beaters absolutely we are on that path right now and uh, ron des i also want to understand from you cricket it will be a part of uh, the la olympics uh, in terms of making the making cricket a global sport what kind of changes do you feel mr shah can bring about to make uh, cricket a little more attractive to the olympic watchers see what we are expecting is more of a bilateral series you know uh, being organized uh, like what we have seen during Af- afghanistan uh, especially afghanistan international set during the crisis jai bhai you know helped the afghanistan team also you know to come practice and they provided all the infrastructure in the country the cricketers came to to our country and uh, you know before before the world cup they uh, practiced uh, in in india so these are the approaches these are the small things which jai bhai had done for the international cricketers at the same time you know uh, what we are looking at is all these bilateral series happening more uh, non cricketing countries you know the uh, 
uh, the cricket should grow in all these areas, all these countries where the cricket is not being played. Like uh, what we see in the T20 tournament or the World Cup cricket tournament, which uh, was organized in uh, America. So these are the few steps, you know, Jai Bai will definitely take care and, you know, uh, uh, participation of all these countries will definitely help in the growth of the cricketing uh, countries, uh, I mean, to play for uh, to play this sport. So this is what we are looking at. Uh, more number of matches, more number of countries participating in this sport uh, before this uh, 2028 Olympics. And, you know, we see a competitive cricket being played all over the country now. Uh, we see, uh, we saw Nepal, Afghanistan and many other countries participating actively uh, in this sport and uh, Jai Bai being an being a Indian because in India cricket is a religion, uh, we, everybody knows that and spreading our uh, uh, cricketing expertise across the globe uh, which uh, I'm sure Jai Bai will definitely uh, do it uh, you know with dedication and with uh, uh, with his vision uh, he will achieve all the goals what are required to uh, you know uh, to for the sports. All right, positive signs there, uh, as uh, per Rohan Desai. But we also on, want to understand the financial side of it a little bit from Shyam Sharma. Uh, sir, uh, uh, Jay Shah, he was also the part of the financial group of the ICS, ICC. What, uh, what do you think he could do differently as uh, his predecessor now, as uh, the chief of uh, the ICC now? Uh, uh, let me complete uh, this advice. The cricketing basically like how cricket will flourish in other countries uh, we, we have seen in the world cup it was organized in usa and many teams participated there i mean like oman nepal papua guinea all these teams i mean cricket you can't stop the cricket uh, like i have been associated with the cricket since the 40 years and i have seen the top brass of bcci used to think that cricket is only for the 12 countries now during this tenure of jay bhai and others basically cricket is uh, flourishing in every country now. Wherever the cricket is popular, they are taking it there. So, their aim is basically to other part, other small nations to participate in cricket also, like Canada, US, Papua Guinea, Oman, other countries, Saudi Arabia, and other countries. So, this is a very good sign that cricket will flourish like football in different countries, number one. Number two, look the uh, All right, so there seems to be some technical uh, issue with uh, Mr. Sham Sharma there. Uh, we'll try and get uh, back uh, Mr. Sham Sharma. But uh, a final word from uh, you, Mr. Rakesh Rao. Uh, what do you feel uh, is uh, the challenge that is lying ahead for uh, Jay Shah now? The first thing is that, of course, the, you know, the global growth of the sport that of course, remains there. But I think what he needs to do now is to make sure that, you know, uh, the sport grows not just, the, you know, the, the whole idea is that the white ball cricket is actually dominating everything. So he has to do something about the survival of red ball cricket here. Because this cricket, by and large, by a couple of nations, you can have a test match, uh, you know, you can have a world championship of this. But it doesn't somehow, if he's not able to sell it, I mean, people are still not watching this cricket the way once they used to because uh, white ball cricket has somehow got into the psyche of the last two generations, if I say. So, but uh, he will have a challenge because the world believes that the red ball cricket is dying. And uh, as the ICC head, and uh, at the time when uh, this, this particular thing about, you know, even the change in the 50 over. Format and that has been, uh, you know, kind of a talking point that you can have two innings and kind of, you know, I mean, a lot of, you know, like variations are being talked about, different variants. But the point is that how much of it will come uh, to reality, we really don't know. But yes, the game still has to evolve. Uh, revenue part is all fine. Uh, you can still tell the sport you are taking it all over the world. More and more countries are playing, but look at the quality overall. All right. What we saw in the World Cup was, okay, USA winning was fine, Nepal running, the country was close. All these are fine, they're just one-off. But the point is, we still have a long way to go. It's still not a global sport. Let right. it enter the Olympics, let the world see it and, and have its own opinion on that. All right. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for uh, your uh, very diverse and important views there. Uh, like we have been talking about it, Jay Shah's rise in the world, world of cricket as an administrator, it is a result of his tireless efforts. 
strategic thinking and passion for sports. So will he continue doing that as the chief of the ICCI? That is a question uh, that still needs to be answered. Thank you for watching.